thwarted. I was going to show you about doing this uh, centre window, this back window, uh, but we've got a few problems because the felts are completely knackered inside. Let's see if I can show you. Well, <laughs> there wasn't any at all in that piece. Oh, there's a little bit here, if you can see. In that there, there's a little bit, not much. The problem is, I've only got two packets, I need four. Booker. Well, anyway, this gives us a good opportunity to replace this piece as well, this uh, little thing. I don't know what it does, it's supposed to stop drafts. Uh, the window was quite diff quite easy to get apart. There's four little stainless steel screws that go through here and then you just pull it apart. Yeah, you can see the, the, the felt in there isn't looking too clever. So we'll replace that. This is the top section. While I'm at it, I just want to show you something that a lot of people make mistakes. These um, screws here, well, not screws, the pop rivets that hold this window in. But they originally were 532s. Now this has been out a couple of times, but this is typical what happens, that they're, they put a bigger pop rivet in than normal. Well, it's no big deal, all right, so you use a 3 16th pop rivet, Mike. What, what, what are you making a big deal about? Well, the problem is, the shanks are too long. And they hit the back of this molding so that's as far as I can get that out I can't get that pop rivet out any further usually if they're the 532s they drop out and then they come out of the channel in around here so that's not really a big, big deal but these won't seem to come out so it looks like we're stuck so the, the, the way around that is quite simply is we, we fill that hole, we're going to do a body sealer on round here, but we'll just drill another pop rivet either side and that will pull it nice and tight. So it's not the end of the world, but it looks like also I'm going to have to get new um, sliding window catches for it as well. Um, they're all buggered up. Well, they weren't very good in the first place, but there's no alternative. So again, um, this window is quite badly scratched. And, uh, wait a minute, I've lost my steel wool. Well, you wouldn't believe it, would you, that I can't find me, me nice fine steel wool. So we're going to use this instead. And we're going to, like I say, we're going to give all this glass a good cleaning around this edge, get all the paint off because it just sets it off when it's nice. You know, when, it, when you've got all your glass, the last thing you want to see is bits of paint. Well, you can see this glass has been through the wars a bit. It's pretty well scuffed because if you can see that scuffing on there, that's because the window has been chattering around without any sealer in. But, as we say in the trade, beggars can't be choosers, so we're... Um, we're having to resort to whatever we can do. Like I say, the, the glass is extremely badly scratched, but it's my pickup and I don't really care. So, I am thwarted until I get some supplies. You know, that's the problem being, being over here is that you, you just want a piece of felt. That's all they want, a piece of felt. And uh, we have to get it in because I can't seem to find the right thickness and right dimensions here. Which is a shame, because otherwise I'd buy it on a big roll. In fact, I tell you what, I might just have a look on Amazon and see what they've got. They've got everything from A to Z. So I've jumped back onto this job because I've just had a delivery of all the parts I need to do this rear window in this uh, pickup cab top. I don't know if you can remember it. I don't even know if I filmed it, actually. Anyway, if you don't, well, you won't be missing anything. One of the things I wanted to notice was that the, the window's been out before, and instead of using uh, 532 pop rivets, I don't know what it is in metric, but they've used 3 16th. The problem with 3 16th is, is this. The head of the pop rivet, you can't get it out. 
uh, so you're going to have to drill new holes in because if you had a 532 pop rivet it would come out of the little channel here but because these pop rivets have got a, a steel shank when you try to drill them out they just spin round and round and round and well you can't get them out it's a bit bit, bit of a problem really and um, so it's something we're going to have to live with so what we're going to have to do If you've given him a sand down and a clean with brake cleaner, we're going to use this stuff. This is a good stuff. Uh, Tremclad, uh, semi gloss black. Uh, it's got primer and everything in it. I don't know how it works. Don't ask me. Ask Mr. Tremclad. So I'm going to give him a quick coat of paint. It's cold today, so it might take a little while to dry. But I've got all the bits and pieces I need. I've got new felts, because these are the old ones. They weren't very good. Kaput. And I've also treated myself, I've splurged, yes, they're brick part ones, I know, um, to uh, some new catches for the sliding windows because those were missing. So, uh, might as well do it, do it right, and do it once, and that's it. So, let's give it a coat of paint and see what it looks like. Oh, dust. <laughs> While the paint's drying on that uh, framework, I thought we'd take the opportunity and put the uh, window catches in here. Now, I haven't fitted these before and I got these from Britpart because they were OEM ones uh, and I had a Britpart order from, from for other people so I just tagged it in with their stuff because they're only really small bags. Anyway, so let's have a look and see what's in the bag. I'll tell you what, let's put it down here and let's have a look. Because there's quite a few bits, and what's broken is this catch here. You know, they are really are pathetic, but there's nothing really much we can do about it. Um, yeah, that's they've all got beaten up, I think. You know, otherwise we'd put that in. Now I think this must be that side. This one here has got the little button that will go on the inside because you don't want them on the outside. I wouldn't have thought. Because otherwise you won't be able to get to them easy. In fact, what did it say on the packet? Oh, so that's this is the right hand. Yeah, I was I was right. So this is the right hand one. Yeah. So we'll we'll concentrate on that for a moment. What do we need? Well, we need to take the old piece out here, and it's a Phillips. Let me go and get a Phillips. I uh, originally thought I wouldn't do this video because not many people have got pickup roofs and I thought it was going to be a waste of time. Still, never mind. Let's take the old ones out. Keep them little screws because they're stainless. Uh, stainless fillet countersunk and small ones. It might be handy for something. Now, how the hell does that come off? Ooh. Ah, there's a rubber seal behind it. Turn that off. And uh, we'll try and take this one off too. And perhaps using a blade isn't really the best of ideas. But I can't see any other way of doing it really. Uh, yeah, you can't really see that, can you? Come down. them up without breaking the window. Let me have a think. Well I just popped them through with the screwdriver. I didn't want to show you that just in case I broke the window. <laughs> Get that off, the rubber off, and away we go. So there's a new mounting plate here or a bolt plate. We'll put the rubber on. from that side. Oh, this is really easy peasy. And then we put that rubber on that side 
there. Now, let's have a look at this very carefully. This piece here has got two little indentations in it, but nothing at the bottom. Um, now, the, the, the corresponding lock on a latch has got, has got nothing, and it's, it's a dead end at the bottom. So I assume that this slides into here, like that somehow. And that is the locking piece at the top. Well, let's give it a go, what the hell? Nothing to lose, have we? No, we'll stick it to bits again. Right, so put like that, like that. And get the new screws. Put that in. Where have you gone? Where are you? Dear, I've lost you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> no, wrong window. <laughs> There's a problem when it's on Zoom, it's so fine you can't see what you're doing. Sorry about that. I'm not going to edit it out, it's a mess about. So, I've got the little indentations at the top. I'm going to put the screws in. I'm not putting anti seize on this because it's not a sort of thing that's, that's going to be removed at any time, so... Not too tight because we don't want to crack the glass. Now I've just been having a thought to myself. If I push this in now with that latch here, maybe I'll uh, restrict myself with this pin uh, when I assemble this frame. So I think what I'll do for now is they're going to go in there. They're going to be tight. They're going to be a banging fit, you know. Yeah, we're going to have to tap them in. I'm going to leave these off for now, and we'll come back later when we put the window in, uh, because I don't want to get, I don't want to damage this pin and break it, because these weren't the cheapest of things. I can't remember actually, though. 15, 20 quid for a set. Quite expensive. Let me put the other side in, and then when, we, when the frame's painted, we'll come back. So we're going to, I've got the pieces down here on the bench, painted them last night. Just want to show you the seals that we were using. That's the part number, and these are OEM seals. I, I couldn't find the right stuff on Amazon or anywhere like that. Ideally, I would have liked to have bought it in a big roll. Uh, so that's it. That's all you get. I don't know if it's sufficient, but I thought I bought four packets just in case to identify which is the top and which is the bottom. The bottom's got some little drain holes in here. Simple enough, eh? Oh, and this is the back. Now, as I mentioned before, this is my truck. I keep mentioning it. The glass is pretty scratched. But, to be honest, it's my pickup. It's my project. I'm not really bothered about things like that. It doesn't really faze me. And the thing is, at the back of my pickup, I've got a mesh screen. That's to stop any... Uh, you know, like throwing wood in or metal or scrap or anything like that in. It doesn't break the back window, which is quite important. So once this is in, it'll probably never get touched. It'll get power washed, you know, to get the dirt off, but that's about it. So let's have a look at this and what we're going to do to it. Well, we're going to put the felt seal into this groove here and then put the two pieces of glass overlapping in the middle so we can bolt it together and finish off putting the felt around these bends here with a bit of luck. Now, I did break my favourite pricker. Not, yeah, well, yeah, no, I brought, I brent my favourite pricker trying to get those um, ends of pop rivets out, so I've given up with that. But anyway, to put this seal in, well, we want it to overlap, if you see what I mean. We want the seal to overlap so we put it in. So that's why I got four bits. I, I'd prefer to chop a bit out than have a bit short, if you see what I mean. So what I'm gonna do 
You think, I think I'll start with an overlap of about like this, but wait a minute. Ah, wait, 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 look at this here. I'm, I'm talking backwards now. You see, you see this, this is the top piece. You see it, it starts here. That there's, a, there's like a, a rubber filler so that the window can't go there, but it needs the filler, the, the felt in here, sorry, excuse me. It needs the felt in there. So let's quickly just put that together as it should be on the car. Let's see, that's that. Um, let's have a look down here. So let's have a look and see how it would be. Now I've kept the little screws in, but I think this time I'll, I'll just take the screws out. They are tiny. Try not to lose them. And let's let's do a, a, a mock up of how this is going to be. Well, let's get that screw out. There we go. So we'll, we'll put that piece in there. We'll put that piece in there, and so that's how it should look. Now we can see by not standing on my felt that the start. It's quite unusual. Have I got that the right way around? Yeah, I'll say that. Hmm. So the, there's, there's two butt-ups of... <laughs> there's a section here where there is a gap. But this has got felt all the way around. So how, do you know something? I think I'm just going to start to put the felt in where the end of this plastic starts and work around. It is so difficult to explain, but putting the felt in is really easy. You just you just make it into a U shape. You just make it into a U shape and uh, like that look and try and get it even and just push it in the, the groove. Now I didn't get that one quite right but let's try it again. If you get stuck, just keep taking it out. It's, you don't glue this in. It is, uh, it is tricky to get started. Let me uh, play around with this, because this is going to be awful boring when trying to do this, but let me see if I can get this in. Because it sort of goes... Oh, that's it. It goes underneath. There's a T piece here in the middle. So that bit's at the right height. I'm there thinking it should go somewhat different now. So that's all we do. We just pucker it in. No wonder Land Rovers are so expensive because they're so time consuming to put all the bits together. There you go. And that's how it should look. It looks really neat, eh? Let me do that. Because that's going to be really boring to watch. And um, we'll come back and we'll fit the glass. I've got the ceiling now, or the felt, but I just want to show you the profile where it fits into, look, you see? That's, that's it there, it's like a, a T type profile. So that's it when it's in. Now there's a little bit of an overlap there, but I've sort of realised that I haven't done this before, so I don't really honestly know where I'm going to end up. So, I'm going to do it just like I did the old uh, side windows, and put the windows in now, and then put remaining felt in later, in patches, because I've got a great long lump sticking out of here, which is to go up to here, which is just going to be a little bit too short, unfortunately. But if I pull it from here, then it's going to make a gap here. So I'd rather have a gap at the top and just put a piece of felt in. Like I say, this is a back window. Not many people have got these sliding back windows, and I haven't got much experience with them, apart from messing about doing the facts. So let's grab the glass and put them in. Now if you remember on, a, on another video we put the um, parts in for the uh, sliding windows but we didn't fit the windows yet. So yeah, this is all going to be backwards. Now the seal is here. I couldn't find a replacement seal. Somebody suggested use a, a wiper blade, but wow, we don't sell them here. That's the problem. So that is going to go on the outside. Like... Oh, that's 
that's not too much, that fits nice. So that's going to go onto there. And this one's going to go on the inside. Like that. See what I mean? Then, all we have to do, he says, is drop the top on. He says. Hmm. Oh, this could be fun. But I think that's the right way around. How the hell am I going to do this? That goes on to there. It's one of those, uh, it's like Sudoku. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull the windows into the middle. Oh no, that won't. Wait a minute, have I got this right? That can't slide. That, that inner window can't slide because there's a bit of plastic there. Um, what the hell? I don't know if you can see down here, there's a, there's a piece of plastic filler that's stopping the window sliding backwards and forwards. I wonder why that is. Well, well, well. This one will slide. But this one's butted up against the end. Hmm. Now, wait a minute, have I got these right around? No, there's the top. This is the top. This is the bottom. There's the top. Hmm, I'm going to have to have a think about this. So here's the problem. I've fastened this side together. But if you can see here, there's a, there's a plastic filler strip. So this window can't move. This one can. That goes nice. This one can't move at all. <laughs> What's that all about? Well, I'll tell you something, I haven't come this far and buy fancy catches, not for the damn window to open. I'm just wondering if it's for like left and right hand drive, perhaps. Wait a minute, which way that opens up? I'm all upside down now. And of course, all my black paint's all got white paint come off this plastic sheet from painting last night, so I'm gonna have to give it another cup of paint. Um, <clears throat> Do you know something? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be bald. I'm going to be fortune favours the bald. I'm going to take that bloody plastic sealer out. I can get it out. I'm going to take it out and I'm, I'm just going to put uh, two sliding windows in. Will I get a tool for that? Kaput. Now. I've got to put a felt in the bottom of here, which isn't a big deal, but this, this window now should slide. Look at that. Oh well. well. Hmm. Yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. Because it's got the little catches in here for the, for the window stopper, both sides. Yeah. <sighs> What a cockamamie thing. So let me fill this with felt and uh, we'll come back. Hey, so there you go. Now we've got this window here that will move and also this one which will move. This one, the frame's just a bit bent but it'll straighten out later. Um, yeah, well I wonder why that was. So, if you're ever doing one of these back windows, four packs of seals and it's just enough to go all the way around. Brilliant, now, top tip. Don't do it on plastic that's had paint on it. And the second thing is this little this little hooker is invaluable because the little roundy bit you can use. Whoop, look how keen they are now to push the ceiling. Uh, sort of like this. Look if you can see. Ah, oh, damn it! I wish I had a wider angle then. You can just push the uh, felt in like that. Great stuff. And also when you're pulling it round, it's going to be good. But, as you saw there, how free and easy these are. But look at this. No rattles. I'll fix that later by uh, grinding a bit of the glass off so it rattles properly. But, <coughs> um, that's that done. All I've got to do now is put the catches on. Bingo. Let's get this. Oh, no, I've got to paint it again because all the white paint's come off this plastic. Look. Damn. I'll touch that up. Ooh, uh, uh, get it dried out, and then we'll fit this to the back panel. Um, I, 
cleaned off the uh, window a bit. I'm going to retouch it, I decided, once it's um, in the frame. Just put a little bit of masking in it, just a bit of light spray. Uh, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a piece of uh, economical seam sealer around this window seal here. Now it's supposed to have like a, an adhesive foam that goes around. Well, that's kind of very expensive. So we're going to use this. This will just do the job, job to keep the water out. Make sure all the panels nice and clean. So we get our caulking gun. Now this is all caulking. So I hope it's going to go. And we just put a, put a bead all the way around like that. Look, nothing too thick. Keep going. It's one of them days. You're glad you didn't buy one of those Chinese caulking guns, eh? Now that's all with one pump. Not too bad. This is a Japanese, they must use a lot of caulking in Japan. There. Notice they're a non-drip gun. That's uh, that's the thing to have. I could have used my uh, pneumatic one, but I thought it would be uh, too decadent. Sure enough. I had some sealer up here before, some seam sealer. Oh, yeah. Now this is a messy way of doing it, but it does clean up quite well. There we go. It cleans up quite well, so I'm not too concerned about that. Now putting the window in itself is quite fiddly because uh, it doesn't just drop in, it, it, you have to move it around. We'll see in a minute when I finish this bit. Now, let's put it in the right way. <laughs> uh, this is the top. This is the top. I'm going to put, try and put one hand underneath. And ease it in. Now, as I say, it's not as easy as you think because it sits in a sock there. There we go. You have to sort of move it and drop it in. It's, it, the, the aperture is smaller than the actual hole, so it, you have to move it around a bit. So there we go. There you can perhaps see and you can listen how bad that glass is. But that's not too bad at all. That's going to squidge out. I ain't worried about that. And that's the reason why I didn't paint it, because I might gouge it when I uh, come to put it on. So now I'm going to get some rivets. Now, Mm. You see, these have been put in with the uh, 3 16 so I'm going to get 3 16 and 5 32s and see which is the best fit. So I'm going to first of all try uh, 5 32s. These should have been the, the proper size. These are the proper side, size for the side windows when it, it's spluttered out. But a lot of people just use 3 16 because that's a common one. See the difference? If I put my thing there. You can see they're a little bit different. But I don't know what the hole sizes are. If any. Oh no, they might be too loose. They're going to be too loose, boys. I'm going to have to put 3 16ths back in. Oh, that's a shame. Wait a minute, I'm just going to get the airline. Right. Here we go. So let's. Put one in. And uh, 
see if we can pick up some more. Now we're going to go diagonally opposite. That's got a bloody rivet in there. Oh dear me, it looks like I'm going to have to drill quite a few of these out. So we've got the rivets in. I might have to, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to, what I'm going to have to do with the holes I can't drill, because they've got the uh, dead end of a, a pop rivet in, I'm going to just have to go to one side and then uh, drill a new hole, that's all I can do, you know. So let me get on with that and I'll, I'll keep you posted. So the glass is now in, now it's clean up time. I'm going to use a little plastic spatula. You could actually use a toothbrush and grind it down and just go around and take as much of that poo off as you can because I've just found out that the, uh, the paint thing that I'm using for taking it off also takes off my uh, black paint I put on last night because it's still a wee bit soft. Not a problem. There you go, get the thick of it off rather than using loads of rags and stuff like that. And then it's easy to clean up. And then we should have a good seal on there. Oh. There you go. I don't know if you can see me around here. I'll come down this way. Yeah, just get your spatula. Scrape it off like that, look. I know it's a bit of waste, we can't put it back in the tub, but we're not that tight. Right, the next thing we're going to do, again, take any excess off. There we go, it all comes off. The more you can scratch off with the spatula, uh, the better really, because it's less clean up. And then, get a piece of uh, paper. You can see why I always use paper towel, because I get through so much of it. And I can burn it at the end of the day, and uh, kill a few polar bears, which is always good. Now, there we go, look, see? In that corner. Lovely, look at that, look at that. That's a nice, acceptable finish. So I'm going to go around all these bits here. Just keep rubbing that round there. And like you see, you only have a little bit to take out. But uh, this is just like um, house paint thinner. It isn't anything special. Don't use paint thinner for uh, automotive stuff because it'll just... Uh, It'll start to melt the paint, we don't want that. There we go. Yeah. That is going to look nice. And then to finish it off, we just go around it with some uh, compound, some very fine compound, and take off the residual and polish any scratches we've put in. I know it's only a Land Rover, but some people care about these things. I don't. Anyway, let me clean this up and then we'll show you something else. I think the word I was thinking was for this stuff here, they call it uh, paint thinner, which is a bit vague. But I think we're more familiar with calling it turpentine. Don't use Varsol or anything like that because it's too severe. Right, you've been warned. <laughs> you don't want all the hard work to go to a mess. Now, we've got a piece of rag, cotton rag this time. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to fold it. We'll put a bit of this uh, ultra cream cutting compound and we're just going to go around this seal again and it'll take off any excess. I should have actually waited for the, the turps to dry a bit but it doesn't really matter. But that will finish off that 
quite nice. There's a little bit in that corner I can't get into. But yeah. Oh yeah, because it's still got a bit damp thin, isn't it? But there you go. That's finished that off. You do exactly the same on the front edge of the roof. Don't put silicone on because it's, it's a bugger to get off if you ever have to take it off. And uh, the actual corking is just as good. So I'm going to finish that off. That would finish this panel off. All I've got to do now is fit the seal in the top. And then we can put it on. Ooh, happy days. Um, I think the next video is we'll, we'll bring the truck in and we'll try and put this panel on. But I'll need a hand with Curtis. Because with having all the glass in now, this has become quite heavy. And of course, don't want to scratch it. It's the last thing we want. So what I'll do is I'll touch up the paint uh, with a little spray gun, you know, can, because uh, I think it's caught on the corner over there. And um, yeah, that should do it. All right, I hope you like that. But it's just bringing something that was um, old and usable back to life. But at the same time, we've worked out how to do two sliding windows at the back. So you'll get twice as many rattles. You'll be thanking for me, me, me about that later. All right. See you later. Bye.